Hi YouTube, BB here. Just have a little uh, fantasy rant. Ideas for a homeschool co-op in the future. It's all reversed, I know. Um, but I have it all written down. And I just want to have a little short video, not a really long one, but I want to just rant about something that is important to me. It just a uh, don't mind the devil in the background. He's just here for Christmas. It's a devil nutcracker. Maybe I should move him at some point. <laughs> so, ideas for a homeschool co-op in the future. Instead of, say, running a big school or having a small school or just hosting online classes, I'd want to do something in person. Maybe from, like, you know, a rent an office space or uh, in an office park or maybe at a at a church with a lot of uh, classrooms and office spaces and a fireside room available or some HOA event hall or some uh, town or city run business building that has a bunch of offices for daily rent. Something like that. So, ideas for a homeschool co-op. I live in Washington State in the U.S. Keep that in mind. Washington State history. One level for grades 5 through 8 and another level for grades 9 through 12 because you can really modify and change the content and the, the reading and the writing level abilities, the expectations academically, the vocabulary, the analysis, thesis, all different writing techniques and reading skills and projects and different mediums of showing your work from a middle school level to a high school level. There are so many different things that can be modified and changed in lesson planning between those five grades, four grades. There's eight grade levels, basically. Fifth grade to eighth grade is one group. Ninth grade to 12th grade is the other group. Some people might call Washington State History Pacific Northwest Studies. But I'm more into Washington State history on its own without including excessive details of Idaho, Oregon, the Oregon coast, Northern California, Utah, British Columbia, the Pacific Ocean. I mean, so much of it is so broad. So, another idea would be Campfire USA, start a new chapter or a troop, or maybe Quest Scouts, which really are a thing in California, not Washington State, but the option is there. That's a good kind of place to start like a new a new chapter or a troop with like a scouting agency. Then a young actors club, guild or class, hire an acting or talent coach, maybe even a voice coach because I think more schools need to have an acting program, an acting class a drama teacher, a drama class, maybe even put on a couple of mini plays and stage plays and skits and choreography techniques and blocking and pacing and and stage performance skills and confidence. I think that's a good necess good necessity in academics because that Acting class, drama class, I think that can really help with social-emotional learning. Another idea would be a hip-hop, jazz, lyrical, dance class, maybe a tap class, hire a certified professional dance instructor. That would probably be very expensive, but it's, it's an idea. Maybe for the high school students, for ages 15 to 18 and a half, maybe 19, depending on cutoff date and how old they are when I offer the class in the potential future 10 years. <laughs> Intro to bachelor degree careers, high schoolers. And that is because there's so much pressure in today's society for teens to go to college, to go to universities, to get a degree to continue on with more academic work, even though they are burned out by the middle of high school. They're burned out. And I think that's ridiculous. That's 
there's too much goddamn pressure to go to college to get a degree in something you're probably never going to use to make a career out of. So, I, I, I'm not saying I would totally feed into that idea that you have to go to college. But since the pressure is there, I'd rather provide today's teenagers with a resource of what is a bachelor degree, what is an associate's degree, what is a master's degree, what is a doctorate degree, what is a PhD. What bachelor degrees are worth it for a long-term, lifelong career, say in medicine or law? or some type of other career and occupation that can become your lifelong profession, not just something that you could get an associate's degree for, or a trade degree for, or a trade certificate, and then go straight into the career path. There's so many different options for higher education. I want other people to know that there are choices, that there are ideas, and it's okay to go into the workforce immediately after high school. It's okay to get a job and to put off going to college when there's more pressure from other people and you don't really have an idea of what you want to get a degree in. Because at that point, you're just wasting your money, your parents' money, the taxpayers' money, college loans that you're going to have to pay back eventually, but a lot of people just don't pay back their loans. It's not feasible. Even your career might not pay you enough money to be able to pay back your loans until long after you die. That's the devil in the background. College loans are the devil. Okay, here's another idea. High school humanities, grades 9 through 12. Now, I probably need a second person to teach co-teach this with me because it takes a lot of lesson planning and piecemealing different ideas and curriculum and resources all together, but it would co humanities would cover current events, land disputes, eminent domain, continental divide, Pangea, political atmospheres, societal standards, world cultures, and evolution of human languages. Amongst many other topics, but that's a good start. Chess. That's right, I said chess. Not enough schools have chess. Not enough homeschool co-ops have chess. Not enough extracurricular activity, multi-activity programs such as, I don't know, YMCA's and Boys and Girls Clubs, after-school activity centers for, you know, after-school daycare enrollment, basically. Whether they're business, big style, or they're in-home, or they're small business. Chess. Hire a professionally rated chess coach grandmaster. And then finally, Creative Club, Knitting, Quilting, Cross-Stitching, Wood Whittling, Scrabble, Japanese Go, Legos, Connects, 3D Printing, and Jigsaw Puzzles, etc. You know, kind of like a board game and creative tabletop game, Jigsaw Puzzles, Create Your Own Games, Game Schooling. I think that, that is a great way to get kids involved in, say, no screens. Have some white noise on in the background or classical music and get get kids and teens into kind of very, not stagnant, um, just quiet, low-key activities. Stimulating, yes, but low-key, not overly exciting and not excessively competitive. It's a great alternative that I think even public schools and private schools should look into because there are kids who need that low-key stimulation, but they don't really want the excitement and energy of adrenaline rush in sports or after-school activities that require a lot of movement or running around and being loud and excited. Some kids are really better with, you know... A, Sentient, that's the word. Sentient activities. And I think that would be a great thing to have in, say, a homeschool co-op. So there we go. About a 10 minute plus video of me talking to my iPad camera. 
about ideas for a homeschool co-op in the future decade. My name is BB. Ignore my fat face. There's a devil in the background and a world map and there's a kitty hiding behind me. Kitty. Look at that kitty. And that's it. That's my video for today. Stay tuned. Please subscribe. I always have more rants coming. Sometimes I talk about family vloggers. Sometimes I, talk, I show grocery hauls. Sometimes I just do little rants about the world that I live in and the things around me. Adios.